Hello the internet, my name is Dean and welcome back to another Ruby on Rails tutorial. Today we're going to cover running a separate process from inside of Ruby or uh, Rails. And the process we're going to be running will be Python. It's just going to be a very simple script that doesn't really serve any purpose other than as a proof of concept. We'll be using the backtick method which will block the current process but it will return the output. There's a couple different methods. I'll have a uh, diagram from a Stack Overflow post that kind of gives you a flowchart of which process to use when, as well as the top answer from that same Stack Overflow post that kind of details what each one does and what it's good for. So I'll have the link in the description and I'll also throw up the graphics at the end. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. So for this, all we really need is a controller. So we're gonna say uh, Rails G controller pages and we'll give it a home action. Just give ourselves a home page to work with, basically. Once that's done, we can come over to our uh, the root of our directory and the config and into the routes.rb. And we'll just say that the root of the application should be the pages controller and the home action. At this point, we can start the server. Uh, Rails S. And then we can navigate to localhost port 3000. Now let's come over to our app, views, pages, home, and we're going to just change this a little bit. So let's make sure the h1 tag says home, and then we'll just change this p tag here to say it's where the, and we'll leave it like that. So for this, we'll probably just want to pass it into a variable, so we'll just put in the at heart variable. Then we can then come into our controller and our pages controller and inside of the def home is where we'll do most of the magic. So for this, what we need, and we can refresh this page so you can see what we're working with right now. So we just have the home and uh, the text it's where the. Now we want this to eventually read out uh, it's where the heart is. So for this, we'll create a variable, we'll call it at heart. And we'll set this equal to, and for this we'll grab um, our back ticks. So these are on the tilde key. These are not your regular single quotes. Make sure you're using the back ticks, otherwise this won't work. And then for this, we'll just say Python because we're running a Python script. We'll do lib assets Python and then whatever the script is. So for this, we'll just call it heart.py. And maybe we want to pass in like a, uh, a Ruby variable for this. So we'll just say our input text equals heart and we'll probably want to put a space in front of this so we'll just say space heart and then we'll just put in a set of quotes we'll open up our um, hash or pound and then open brace and then here we'll pass in our input text as the variable and then we close brace we close quotes and then we close back tick so this this right here will run our python script that's located in this directory, and it'll pass it this system argument. So now what we have to do is go over to our lib folder and actually create this. So inside of lib assets, we have a folder called Python apparently. So here we'll just create a new folder. And unfortunately my camera is blocking this. So we'll just say new folder, we'll call this Python. And then inside of that Python folder, we'll create a script. We'll save this as heart.py. And then in here, all we really need is import sys. Then we'll say input is equal to sys.argv1. And then we'll just do a print command where we say input plus quotes and the word is. So our input here is, I believe, just the word heart. And we're so we're grabbing the word heart, putting it in the input. So we're just saying heart plus space is. And then we're capturing it here. So now if we refresh this page, you can see that the Python script is running and the text is being grabbed from our, a combination of passing the variable from Ruby into the Python script, and then printing it out in the Python script and capturing it back in Ruby, and then printing it in the view. And that's pretty much the full stack for this. Uh, I'll overlay the diagram right now for a couple seconds, and then once that's done, I'll overlay the other Stack Overflow posts that kind of details it a bit more. 
And that about does it for this video, really. So, uh, you know, if this helped, like the video. If this didn't help, remember to dislike it so other people know not to watch this video. It does matter. I mean, I personally check videos to see what their like to dislike ratio is before I watch them. And if I see that there's other content available, then I'll probably navigate away and watch the other video. So, you know, you are helping other people as well as me when you do this. But uh, that about does it for this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.